Hey look, it's Travis. Uh, I had to start this video out with a quick phone call. Uh, this is Travis. He does a charity called Shellback Tech. It is, it's an approved 501c3 public charity. And if you guys aren't familiar with Travis and what he does, he builds computers for disabled, vet disabled veterans and first responders. And uh, I think that is a very good cause. And I have something to maybe offer Travis today, but I wanted to explain things a little bit first. I just wanted to say, Travis, thank you for what you do. Basically, like the, the gist of it is like people who go and put themselves in harm's way, harm's way to protect others, and then who make the ultimate sacrifice by, you know, having to deal with some lifelong disability or something like that as a result of it, Travis builds them gaming PCs and then donates them. So it's a very good cause. Thank you, Travis, for what you do. Thank you, Paul, I appreciate it. No problem at all. And um, just to, to sort of explain to you why I got you on the phone today and everything, I have a problem, and that is that I have way too much stuff in my garage. And um, one of the things I actually have is over here in the corner. It's, it's, a nice, it's a nice looking build. It's probably like the fanciest water cooled build that I've ever set up. It's in the uh, Spectre 2.0 case by Singularity, which is a really cool case. And I feel horrible because this build has pretty much just been window dressing for me. It's been sitting back here. And honestly, I built it at a time when I was so backed up with stuff. I, I intended to come around to do a bunch of follow-up work on it, and I really haven't. So today's video, I'm going to be working on this build. And unfortunately, my plan is actually to take it apart. I feel bad about that, but I want the pieces to live on and to get further use. So uh, what I have in this system is a X570 motherboard and a 3950X CPU. The case is just, it's big and it's bulky and it's really hard to transport. And that's why I'm not leaving the system together. If, if I could leave the system together and find a good home for it, I would. But I think what I'm gonna do is take everything out of there. The case I'm going to find a new home for. And Travis, since you were saying uh, on Twitter the other day, you have tons and tons of uh, builds lined up, like 30 of them or something. Right and you do not have graphics cards because Travis is dealing with the same situation that everyone else is dealing with right now, which is graphics cards are absurdly overpriced and really difficult to come by. So what I have right there is two MSI Seahawk RTX 2080 Ti's. I needed a home for the Seahawks. They have uh, a liquid, uh, they have a, a sort of a semi-opaque liquid in there from Thermaltake that's actually been holding up really well. So today I'm gonna do a little bit of quick testing to see if that liquid's still doing okay. And then if you're willing to uh, take on these two 2080 Ti's and give them new homes in the systems that you're putting together, because they will need to go in water-cooled systems. They are pre-blocked water-cooled cards. Uh, I'm gonna send them over to you. Yeah, they will definitely get put to good use. Uh, I, I was actually just building a water-cooled system that I, I had to put a temporary card in uh. just so I could get the loop together. Uh, but this will definitely fill out the space nicely, and it's even on an MSI uh, X570 creation board. Nice. Oh, that's a, that's a perfect fit. All right, so that's my MO for today. You do a little bit of testing on the system take it apart, uh, get those GPUs out of there and cleaned out, and then I'll get them on the road and send them over to Travis. And uh, and then hopefully you guys can go follow Travis and you guys can maybe see what he does with them for his charity builds. That is incredible, Paul. Thank you so much. And it's it's an absolute pleasure and honor to actually work with you on this. Well, Thank I you. I am, again, Travis, I, I have a lot of respect for what you do and, and how you do it. And really, really, guys, if you haven't checked out Travis's channel, the builds he put together, they're not just like, he doesn't throw them together. Like, he puts a lot of time and effort into them, gives them a theme, uh, often does all the color matching and stuff like that. So a uh, really good channel and uh, really good charity. So guys, check out Travis's stuff, Shellback Tech, and uh, I'm going to get back to work. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center, one of my favorite places to buy PC parts, whether it's online or at one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies, as well as the custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in stock at your nearest store while ensuring compatibility with your selections. Then you can pick up or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description and don't forget to sign up for the free in-store gift.
I'm sure a lot of people are going to be asking me, like, Paul, why, why are you taking this system apart? You spent so much time on it, so much effort. I finally posted the, like, final build is complete video back in March of 2020. And uh, the system has been doing kind of what it's designed to do ever since, which is to be a showpiece. A build like this is really designed with aesthetics often more in mind than functionality. And while I'm glad to have had this in my background for quite some time now, honestly, I have not been using it to actually game or anything like that. So in today's market, with graphics cards being at a premium and really difficult to find. That was part of my motivation here was to find a good home for these 2080 Ti's, which are still very, very good cards. And that's why I hit Travis up because a good cause, obviously, but also he kind of knows what he's doing when it comes to water cooled cards. And even though these have had this coolant in them for some time, you can tell down here in the blocks, it's still flowing pretty nicely. I'm hoping to get some testing going to actually determine if uh, they're cooling effectively. A lot of the things in here are the Corsair fittings from their Hydro X series, which are essentially the same as Bits its power fittings. And then of course there's the case, the Singularity Spectre, and this is the 2.0 version. And I know that they have already updated and made a new version of this case. And I think they've even taken some of my feedback into consideration with, with stuff like this front plate here, which I don't want to call a distro plate because it's really just sort of an aesthetic thing where it's like, hey, let's, let's make the fluid go up here and flow through the front of the case too. It just has an inlet and an outlet. And this was actually one of the problem areas of the build was getting the fittings worked out up in there to flow through that. They do still offer this, but they've uh, upgraded a little bit and they actually did a better job integrating the lighting because that was you know, one of the other things I felt like getting the system together was you've got this sort of back distro plate here that holds everything together and that has LEDs going across the top of it. So right now the LEDs are yellow and that sort of illuminates the entire thing and makes it look really cool, especially when you have nice coolant going through it like this that has a little bit of texture and a little bit of an effect. There's my special Paul's Hardware logo on there. And all you're seeing here is the reflection from the Windows update that's going on. But I, I really wanted to have like the lighting going through this front piece as well, but there just wasn't really a practical way to do that. And I spent enough time on this build as it is. So this was the finished product. And when I say this case is a little impractical, uh, there's multiple reasons for that. One of the reasons is that it's got these, oh, sorry, that's the uh, Wi-Fi antenna. So when I mentioned practicality of this case, part of the reason is that the whole thing sits on these sort of legs down here. And that means the entire case is uh, attached to these vertical pieces here. And these vertical pieces are attached to a massive piece of acrylic. You can see they're just bolted through there. And uh, anytime I lift this thing, especially when it's all kitted out, I'm just so worried that the acrylic is going to start to shatter or break along these lines here. And it also feels like the entire thing is sort of tilting that way a little bit um, because everything is hinging on this sort of joint right here. Beyond that, there are just some sort of expectations that you might have for a case like, you know, front panel IO, USB or something like that, that might be on the top or along the front. Those don't exist at all. So the, all the IO is gonna be in the back for you. And then as for the system itself, I've got like a 16 core processor in there in this kind of crazy and ridiculous two-way RTX 2080 Ti setup, which is kind of a dead configuration too, by the way, like an SLI setup. It's just there so you can be like, oh my gosh, look at the, look at the Epic computer, even though it's not gonna be used essentially for anything because SLI configurations are really only helpful in a few synthetic tests and they don't aid you in gaming too much these days. But you also don't have additional expansion because everything's kind of suspended and out there. There's no way to add more drives or do anything like that. So so having this as like a workstation slash gaming system with the high core count CPU is also, again, just a little impractical. So for all those reasons, I decided I'm going to take the case and I'm going to hand it off to someone who can maybe do a new build or a refresh build in it. Somebody who is enthusiastic about building a water-cooled system that they can then display. And the rest of the parts, I'm just gonna find good homes for. One of the things I was considering was trying to do a charity auction or something like that with this build, but I already have another water-cooled system that I'm putting together that is going to be a giveaway PC. And again, just transporting this anywhere except like a local handoff is gonna be very difficult. And finding a buyer for something like this that's gonna be anywhere near the value of it is actually a little bit harder than you might expect. There's a lot more people out there who are hunting for, you know, reasonable price to performance PCs versus something like this. And if somebody does want to put together something like this, chances are they're going to want to do it themselves because water cooling on this level is sort of a niche hobby thing where you don't always get out of it what you put into it. But oh, it looks like Windows Update has finally finished. I've rambled long enough for that to happen. So let's fire up some tests and see how this system is performing uh, a good 13, 14 months after I filled it with that Thermaltake LCGS coolant. 
After briefly pausing for a lunch break, I had a bit of shawarma that was left over and some baba ganoush, it was delicious. I've got the system up and running with Windows updated and uh, I am running a first Ida64 stress test, which has been going for about 10 minutes now, I guess a little uh, over 11 and a half now. And that has had a few different effects. One is that the pump ramped way up because the CPU temperature went up. So our fluid now is a bit more foamy than it was before. One of the things I did when I originally set this up was crank to the pump speed way, way, way down on this so that you could actually get a nice sort of waterfall effect in there and so that the uh, elements that are in this fluid from thermal take would actually be a little bit more visible. You can kind of see the flow going through the blocks right here, but one of the benefits that this had is that some of the places right in here in the GPU blocks where you can see some of the buildup that had occurred where the stuff was sticking there, it has actually cleared through and freed out a lot of that. So that's, that's cool. I don't get as good of a look at the CPU block that's up here, but uh, at least in terms of liquid flow, things are flowing through pretty well and it does seem like our temperatures are not horrible. Our CPU has not throttled at all, so that's good. Uh, the clock speed that it runs at is about 4.1 gigahertz across all 16 cores when under full load, depending, of course, upon uh, the temperature that the CPU is actually at as well. So while you are gonna get a lower all-core frequency with a 16-core CPU like this that is under a full synthetic stress test load, I at least have not hit a throttling point where it says, oh, it's getting too hot to handle even right now, and it needs to dial things back below the recommended uh, frequencies that uh, AMD programs in there. That said, we did hit 87.4 degrees C. This top line here is like a CPU hotspot, so that's the hottest of any spot on the CPU is 87.4. Actual running temp has dropped back down though to a more like a 76 or 77, and that's also represented here in the average uh, temperature across all of the uh, thermal sensors on the chip. Meanwhile, each individual die, CCD1 and CCD2, hit uh, 82 and 83. So again, that's a little on the warm side, but still okay. It's not like the system is throttled. Granted, with a full water-cooled build like this and all the extra effort put into it, you would want lower temperatures than that, but that would have been about a year ago when this coolant was still fresh and hadn't had a chance to get any buildup on any of the blocks. One thing this test has done is warmed up all of the fluid throughout the entire loop, and it's just a single loop for the CPU and both GPUs on this build, so that is something to keep in mind. What I'm going to do next is stop our IDA64 6 instability test. I'll go ahead and restart the Hardware Info 64 monitoring, and then I was going and run times by ex extreme, but then I realized, oh, I should probably double check what uh, version of NVIDIA. Oh, uh, let me update the N NVIDIA driver real quick. Okay, updated to 466.11 now, and uh, SLI is enabled for our two-way 2080 Ti setup, so I'm just going to run 3D Mark times by extreme just to see what our score is. And also, I should apologize here. These are just kind of anecdotal tests I'm running right now to see what the temperatures actually are. What I should be doing is comparing baseline tests that I ran back at the end of 2019 to see an AB comparison. I never, I never got those tests done though. Unfortunately, that was one of my fails with this build. But now I've confessed that to you guys and I feel better. So let's see how 3D Mark times by extreme does. And there it is, our times by extreme score of 12,480. Great, says 3D Mark. Thanks, with a nice high graphics score of 13,759. And comparing our online results shows our score is way up here, whereas most people live down here. So, you know. That's nice. We're still well above a premium gaming PC in 2020. That's nice since this system was actually built in 2019. However, I do also want to point out that this is with SLI and actually taking advantage of SLI, whereas with a lot of games that don't, your performance would probably be, again, more down in that area. Temperature-wise, our GPUs are doing quite nicely, though I'd say they're even holding up a little bit better than our CPU blocks, so I wonder if that has to do with maybe the thin grid in there being a little bit more loose and allowing stuff to pass through rather than catching stuff. 63.3 degrees Celsius was our our maximum temperature though. We also hit a peak GPU clock of 1,950 megahertz, and that's without an overclock. Second GPU stayed even a little bit cooler at 58.9 degrees Celsius max, and again was up at 1950. So I guess to recap and kind of summarize my little performance analysis of this build, which wasn't very well planned and is also taking place much further after the build was put together than originally intended, the Spectre 2.0 case is a cool looking case. It's very unique and it was a lot of fun and very challenging to build in. However, it's also very impractical in a lot of different ways. So I will be finding a new home for this case soon and hopefully someone else can have the joy or the struggle or the sort of combination of both of building in it while the remainder of the hardware and particularly the graphics cards goes to better use in different builds that people are actually going to game on. As for this thermal take fluid, the LCGS special fluid that they were developing, I asked them about it and they said they never actually brought it to market with all of the confusion and complications that happened in 2020. It wasn't something that they pushed forward with, but when it comes to specialty fluids that I've used and especially the opaque fluids and the ones that look like they've got stuff in it so it gives a really nice cool 
flow effect, the ones that I have sampled in the past have gunked up, clogged up, and caused the system to essentially become unusable after not too long because the temperatures just go way, way, way up and you have to flush things, clean things, and that sort of thing. This stuff is definitely not performing as well as it did originally, but it's doing way better than any other opaque fluid that I've ever used before. So if you guys are interested in something like this for your own personal use, maybe hit up Thermaltake on their social media or elsewhere and say, hey, that LCGS coolant that you guys were working on in 2020 and kind of put a hold on for the time being, we're still interested in that, so uh, maybe bring it to market. All that said, I am now going to start the disassembly of this system, so uh, I think that means it's, it's time for a montage. Let's go. I've partially drained the loop. Things are going, going really smoothly, as you can probably tell. The challenge here is that this main chamber drains pretty easily, pretty quickly, but uh, everything else that's tied up into the radiators and everything is, is tied up into the radiators and everything, so uh, I still got some work to do. So as I've been taking this whole system apart, it's been an interesting experience. I've been I've been flooded with a, a range of emotions because for one, it's the first kind of build project that I've done out here on the workbench table for a while and I want to get back to doing more of those. But part of the consideration with these types of videos is that I need to be able to get them done in a day. That's important. So that's why my goals today were to get these cards separated so that I could get them sent over to Travis and I have succeeded in that. I did want to give you guys at least a superficial look at the block here. Um, I'm going to send these over to Travis and he said, he's going to disassemble them and clean them out internally because that's something that definitely needs to happen. And although we did still have uh, pretty good temperatures on the GPUs, uh, you can see there a little bit of buildup happening around the jet plate, which is what forces the water over those fins as it cycles through the GPU block. And that's what does the work of moving the heat away from your GPU so it can run at a lower temperature and higher frequency. This block as well, you can see a little bit of the gunk, a little bit of the buildup, but again, compare this to other opaque fluids or any fluid that has had this kind of texture in it before, and there haven't been many because it's a difficult thing to accomplish and bring to market. And this one, like I said, isn't even available at retail yet. But after a good 13 months of use, where it's been on a good amount of time, off a good amount of the time, the uh, stuff inside has had a chance to settle and then been returned and stuff, I think this is a pretty reasonably good result and something that if you were committed to regular maintenance, you could probably use as long as you were willing to flush the system out maybe every six months to a year. That said, I'm totally happy that the rest of the system is completely disassembled, totally finished, completely drained, nothing left in the loop or anything. Good as new, pretty much, just like the day I got it, except it doesn't have the flight case anymore. But working on this build again has really been like kind of peeling back the layers of an onion and seeing all the different things that were worked on over time, the cable management that was done and tucked away really early on. And when I finally finished this build, it was March 2020, and we were in the middle of a remodel at the time. And if you guys remember March 2020, uh, the rest of the year didn't go so well. Life changed pretty significantly for me, as I imagine it did for you as well. And finishing off like my testing and the stuff that I had promised on this build kind of fell to the back burner and then a year went by. I guess what I'm trying to say is that now that I'm feeling a little bit more confident in ramping my production back up, I'm going to try to do more projects like the these, but it's going to be a little bit different, I know, because of the GPU situation right now than normal, where I would say, hey guys, here's a computer that I'm building and you could build too. So I'm going to keep trying to bring you guys stuff like this, different projects that are projects that I need to get done because I want to clear stuff out or help people out or make use of some of the hardware I have here that isn't being used during a GPU shortage. And of course, I'm gonna keep doing the weekly tech news as well as the other videos where I'm sitting at the desk. And look, I 
ripped my glove open because I'm, I'm so powerful. Rounding things out though, super happy that this is completely finished and no more work to do on it. These, Travis has said, I can uh, leave open so that they can dry out and then I'll be shipping over to him. He's gonna be cleaning out the blocks and then he'll put them in systems that will be donated through his charity. And then I will be trying to maybe answer some of the unanswered questions from this video, like uh, what's gonna happen to the rest of Spectre 2.0? What are the other builds that I have coming down the pipeline? Do I have any other graphics cards lying around that I could uh, figure out a good use for? I'll be covering all that stuff in future videos as well as a continuation of my personal build projects that I'm also working on. So lots of content coming at you guys really soon. If you enjoyed this one, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe for all that stuff I just talked about and viewing it in the future. If you'd like to help support my channel, you can check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts and mugs and pint glasses and new beer sets with coasters and bottle openers and imperial pint glasses that hold 20 ounces, not 16 like stupid regular pint glasses. That's all for this one though. Thank you guys so much again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.